God. Come, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Shalom, coming back at you with a Monday morning session. Lord, we're going to be doing these Monday morning sessions. We're about to give all our glory to the Halibar Shimmy Al Rashad, Brother Zabi Yellow. Brother Nakos, come, coming back at you with another live stream. As you know, you know, you, um, the Wicked Worldly Holidays, Friday was so called Good Friday. Sunday was so called Easter. We had a lot of bunnies, you know, popping around, a lot of eggs, you know what I'm saying, being, you know, them sent off everywhere you had little children playing in these different things and you know israel participating in these activities through the spirit right but we're going to go into the history of easter what it actually means what it actually represents and why our people shouldn't celebrate these pagan holidays because that's just what is it is it's pagan and the lord's not dealing with pagan holidays the lord's not dealing with the religions and the philosophies of his world let me go to the book of colossians chapter two and i'm gonna start at verse eight the lord is not dealing with the the philosophies of this world, man. This Colossians chapter two and verse eight, and it says, "Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and what vain deceit after the traditions of men." And after this, you know, breakdown through the Spirit, Lord willing, you kind of understand that this holiday that the world promotes and celebrates is a, the tradition of men, and then they want to correlate it with what the scriptures. It has nothing to do with the scriptures because our forefathers never kept these holidays. And what else? After the rudiments of the world and not after Hamashiach. So these uh, these things that our people love to participate in is after the rudiments of the world. And the Lord said, love not the world. Right? It's not after Yahweh Yashah, although they try to portray like it is. Right? Let me go to the book of First uh, John. Actually, go to James 4 and 4. So like, you can put it on a screen, too. Oh, con, lock it. I wasn't showing it. Con, the walk. Con, all praises to the Most High. This James chapter four and verse four. You adulterous and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of this world is enmity with the Most High? And you have a lot of jakes that may say, you know, only did it for the kids so the kids can run around. I don't know. I. I I don't believe in it, you know, but you know it's for the kids. And Jake give you that little nudge, like like you like you understand him. You know, you know we keep the commandments. You know we Israelites, but you know he's doing it for the kids. No, none of that, man. Huh? We're not doing it for the kids. We're not doing it for the baby. We're not doing it for little John John. We're not doing it because his man man eighth. You know his birthday turn. He turned eight in eight days, little man. We're not doing it for them, right? Because grandma cooked, so you know we gonna do no. The Lord said, if you have friendship of the world, you have enmity with the Most High. You have all, you are odds against the Most High. Whatsoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now, who wants to be an enemy of God? If, if you if you want to be an enemy of God, you remember who the Most High is. Just read the Old Testament. Now the Lord was destroying and killing and dropping, you know, 30 corners on these heathens, man. We're not trying to be the enemy of the Most High, so you can't keep these wicked holidays. But if you're the friend of the world, then you are the enemy of the Most High. But you got to be. Uh, yeah, that's right. Right, you know. And, you know, uh, excuses either. Right? You can't say you didn't know. You didn't know the origin of these different things because you got the Internet. Right. All right, the Internet is, uh, is, is powerful. So you're going through all these things and, you know, you breaking your back just to celebrate the holidays of the so-called white man and you don't even know what they're going into every literally every holiday that america has set up it all goes back to something on the left hand side either some a uh, wicked guy that's always for some reason all they guys go back to uh lewdness at the end of the day some uh freakism all men are wickedness all right now i want to get this quick precept because like the brother put out collages in the second chapter you got uh, the rudiments of men that's not after the Most High. But yet people have set it up as if it's after the Most High when it's really not. So this is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse number one. Then came to Yahweh Shai, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? So guess what? They asked the disciples, how come uh how come you and your your, your people how, how come y'all transgress the traditions of the elders now since when in the law did the lord set up traditions of man again like how the brother put out college of the second chapter and even in the law 
you don't read none of you don't read uh the traditions of man right and the lord set up the traditions of sunset no the lord set up the laws the statutes commandments and ordinances he never set up any traditions of man so reading on it says for they for they wash not their hands when they eat and when he answered and said unto them why do ye also transgress the commandment of god by your traditions so the lord asked, so the lord kind of cut him why do you break god's laws to keep your own traditions and that's what this world does they break god's laws to keep easter and it's you know and when you think about it it's really uh madness because they say uh easter it goes back to uh easter they say in the eastern the greek it means passover yet they take the word easter and they set up a, a whole different holiday which is symbolizes passover which you, but you don't keep the passover you want to keep something that's a recycled version of the passover a trash version of it that's like a man's uh reading the quran you just doing a bare minimum when I go to the garbage part where you got the full authentic real thing in front of you same thing with lent you know northern kingdom they got that lent uh doctrine in the catholic church you celebrate in lent and these different things we'll just you know just celebrate the passover the lord has it set up for a reason let me get that in leviticus 23 real quick right the lord has the passover set up for a reason and nowhere in the law or throughout all the bible do you read about these man-made religions holidays known as uh, easter christmas um halloween but yet you still have people, Christians, namely, that push these holidays out as if, you know, it's the Mosai. So this is the book of Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 5. And the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So the Lord, he set up Passover. Or he didn't set up uh, Easter for men to celebrate. He set up the Feast of Unleavened Bread to keep for seven days. He didn't set up Lent to keep for however many days you keep that for so again you want to keep these um you want to actually go back to what the lord said and not do your own thing create your own doctrine try to mix a little bit of truth in it and a little bit of lies in it and you come up with some uh again some wicked doctrine All right but you got it huh and that's what and i mean at the end of the day let me go to the book of second Ezra's. right the book is second Ezra's chapter 9 and i'm gonna start at verse number 20. it's second ezra chapter 9 and verse i'll start verse 19 for then every one obeyed but now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed right that perpetual seed that evil seed that was ingrained in adam from the beginning right by a law which is unsearchable rate themselves so i considered the world and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. Because man creates wicked inventions. Man creates devices. Man creates vanity on the earth. You're making up feast days that have nothing to do with the Most High. I thought the Most High de decided the feast days. All right, we go to the book of Sirach, chapter 7, I mean 33 and 7. The Lord decides the feast days, but man, through his devices, he has came up with what? different man-made inventions that has nothing to do with the Lord. Right? It's Sirach, I'm going to start at verse 8, get to the point. I'm sorry, verse 7, Sirach 33 and 7, and it says, why do if one day like still another? So why is one day better than the next day when as all the light of every day in the years of the sun? So why is one day better than the next day when the sun comes out every day? But the Lord is going to tell you why. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished, and he altered seasons and feasts. And as the brother went into, when you go to Leviticus chapter 23, you never read anything about Easter. That's not there. I don't see a bunny, right? I don't I don't see a, 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 some eggs that's different color. And, and in Easter, you got different color eggs. Where does that come from? I've never seen a chicken produce orange eggs. Damn, where is that? These look. What is this? What is this different colors that are significant of? What's the breakdown behind that? Right? But you will understand it goes back to these different gods and a different god that uh these nations worship, man. Evil traditions. 
All right, but we can get into it. This, uh, did you want to, which article did you want to bring up? Uh, whatever one you uh bring up first, we go through that one this Huh? Got a few different articles, just kind of you know, a few different sources, witnesses saying the same thing, All right? Uh, in different words, right? And it says the Easter bunny Oster Hayes originated in Germany. The Easter here, the Easter hair, right, bunny, or Oster Hayes, as a symbol, Easter symbol, seems to have its origins in Germany. Not Israel, but Germany, right? Where it was first mentioned in German writings in the 1500s, the actual Easter Bunny legend is rooted in German tradition. So this is not even, this is not even Israel tradition. You have a whole bunch of jakes yesterday that went to church. They dressed up. They took their kids. Kids don't ever go to church. We leave them at home. They took their kids. And they dressed them up for a German tradition. It's like, I got a quick point. Come huh. Yeah, um, I was on Instagram, and it's a lot of Jakes, you know, that I still uh, follow in the world that follow me. And I was going through Instagram, it's a lot of wicked Negroes that I know they went to church and posted it, them getting baptized. And these are the same men that's posting, oh, again, you know, I went to high school with these men. And uh, these are the same men that, you know, they're trying to cover up their sins by just going uh, to church from one day, like how the brother said. Yeah. Go to church one day after you get baptized, you go back to all type of madness and you know, posting all type of madness, but yet you're a Christian, and you're holy, and you're godly, and you went to you went to a church for the first time since last year, and you celebrated Christmas, you got dunked in that water just to go uh, commit fornication today. What you got? You got a church trying to talk to the other Eve, you looking at the other Eve all the time, man, that dress tight. Right, I'm about to get after. I'm about to, after the service. I'm about to go get after her. I'm about to go yeah. see her some Easter eggs with her. That's what Jake thinking right now. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's German tradition, right? And this is this one uh, uh, um, viewpoint behind the uh, uh, so-called Easter, right? Going back to German tradition, right? Let me read on a little bit more. We get another one. And it says a legend holds that a poor woman living in Germany decorated colorful eggs for her children to find in the garden. And as soon as the hidden eggs were found by the children, a large hare was seen hopping away. The children thought the hare right, left the eggs. The ancient legend is thought to be the root of Easter bunny we know and love today. So a so, uh, 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 so-called eat my woman painted some eggs and hid them for their children and seen a bunny. Now you got Easter. This matters. And it says, like the egg, the rabbit is a symbol of new life and rebirth, right? That fertility. Another legend tells that a poor woman decorated eggs for her children to find during a famine. The Easter Bunny was introduced to American folklore by the German settlers who arrived in a Pennsylvania Dutch country during the 1700s. Right, so this woman was decorating eggs, and, her, and she was making her children go find it in the famine, and she had food the whole time. This is madness. Yeah, and you know, the fact that the world believes this just lets you know how, you know, it just lets you know the state of the people nowadays. She hiding I mean, egg and her children are hungry. Yeah, and then you see a bunny and a bunny hop away and now all of a sudden you can't stop the bunny like this. And the fact that a story like this can carry on so far to deceive the mass of the world is, you know, again, it lets you know the minds of the people and the lies that Babylon just pushes forth. Let me get it. I got a quick precept. You know, uh, again, this it, and it's, it's folly. When you really, when you come into the truth, you think about it, it's like little things like that can really overthrow a whole uh, kingdom. A little lie like that that uh, had some eggs. One, one, just one woman. Now all of a sudden, the whole world, all of Christianity, represents uh, Easter. Right? It's madness. I'm gonna go to Sirach chapter, I believe that's chapter 22. Actually, I want to go to Revelation uh, 21 and 8. Right? I want to go to Revelation chapter 21 and verse number 8. Because the Lord is not just gonna have you deceive the world and lie to the world, and you just get away scot free. Right? This Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. It says, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters it's the point and all liars who's the who, who who's a bigger liar than america than esau himself 
the Lord said, and all liars, right, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So since America has deceived the world and these different uh, doctrines and all type of wickedness and madness and just straight out, straight out lies, the Lord has to judge them with the second fire of death, right? Nuclear flames coming from uh, all these other countries and judge Babylon the Great because they made every nation to drink out of wine of fornication. I'll tell you read about it. Re Let's get that in Revelation 18 real quick. That's right. Revelation 18 and verse number. Let me see what I want to start at. I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, For all nations have drunk of her wine of the wrath of her fornication. Right? And that's spiritual that it came out of Germany because, and it's uh, heavily pushed in America because Germany was a part of the ancient Roman Empire. And we know Babylon the Great is just a revised Roman Empire. Right? Back then, uh, Germany, Germania, you know, they was a part of that thing. And you see this lie came out of Germany, but it's magnified in America. We don't know. It says, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have waxed rich, though through the abundance of her uh, delicacies, of her delicacies. It says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. And that ye receive not of her plagues. So the Lord said, that's you partaking in sin and you being joined to this uh, kingdom when you're celebrating things like Easter. And again, you got Christians, the so-called so the most holy, uh, holiest people that's celebrating demonic things right in front of your eyes. Not just celebrating it, but pushing it out to the masses of the people. All right, but you got it. Come on. Come on. That's exactly right, man. You know, and the Lord tells us in Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. We're going to preach that real quick before I go to the next article. All right, Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word that the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So the Lord gives us direct commandments on not to learn after the ways of the other nations. It's vanity. It's vain. Right? Because as we have high holy days after our God, and we celebrate our God in these high holy days. What do you think Esau and these other nations' high holy days are about? They all go back to their gods, right? They serve their gods to their high holy day, which is Easter, so called Valentine's Day, so called Christmas, right? You have their gods being worshiped on these days, and you don't even know it because they concealed it. But when we have high holy days about our God, we magnify the name of the Lord. That's what the Lord said. Learn not the way of the heathen, because you're going to celebrate their gods. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So we're not learning the ways of the other nations. And it, like in one source, says it goes back to a German tradition. The Easter bunny goes back to a German tradition. That's how they got the Easter bunny. It was up there in Germany somewhere, man. And Jake up here running around trying to catch Easter bunnies, man. Right? Doing zigzags and, you know, in a tuxedo, and Easter bunny breaking their damn ankles, man. At church, you know, so let me get this next article. So I had a, a, a quick point too. Because when you go, you, you can go back to that first article real quick. When you look at the date, it said, um, that date came around during the 1700s. So, hold on, if it's dealing with Christ, then why, how, how come the date didn't date back to around the time of Christ or the apostles? Around uh, uh, 30, you know, 30 uh, AD, you know, 48. How come it's not touching around the early time period of when Yahweh shot and the disciples was on the scene or even after his death? Why is it in the 1700s when a so called white man is in rulership that all of a sudden, you know, this uh, this Easter, this, this woman had this? I mean, it's, it's man, I, it's, it's, it's confounding me as I'm thinking about it just. A woman and her kids then placed a colorful egg somewhere and a bunny hopped away and now the whole world where she's it's like it's where, the, where is she getting these eggs from? And why is she coloring them? What in her mind told you, you know to, to color the eggs? And why is she hiding it from her kids? And they hungry. Yeah. And for and who and who saw this woman and wrote it down for everyone 
to read about it today. It's just it's, it's too many. Who's, who's the event? Who's the recorder during the time? Yeah, like this this world is let you know just how far away you know this world is from the most high. Seventeen hundreds. Christ was last time I checked the Lord. He the Lord been off the scene during the seventeen hundreds. But you know you got it. That's the quick point I wanted to make. Seventeen hundreds. Who is this event of his mother hiding food from her kids during the pandemic? During the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, it's a mighty scribe. Ezra back on the earth. <laughs> Why is he not looking for food? Is he hungry? Man, let me go to the next article. Man. It's, it's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You know, so they're going to slap him, right? But this is pagan roots of Easter, right? Each and every Easter, children across Britain will go in search of eggs hidden around their house and garden by Easter. We get chocolate eggs will be purchased. We'll get into it. We have to get into it. There we go. Easter is a Christian festival celebrated across the world, commemorating the resurrection of Jesus Christ after his crucifixion. How then have bunnies? Buns and eggs come to be associated with this religious event. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the question that we asked. How did this bunnies and eggs be associated with Yahweh Shem Yahushua? Right? The answer lies in pre Christianity. Uh oh. Right? With, uh, w, shout out to Debbie for Indiana. I think they had, uh, they had a video on Crackianity. Right. Uh, Crackianity with many of, right. themes of the themes of Easter rooted in pagan traditions. Easter falls at a time of the year known as the spring equinox, right? Or the spring solstice. And if you know anything about Christmas, that's the winter equinox or the winter solstice. And it goes back to the same uh, God, uh, Ishtar, right? And it says when the le- when the length of the nights in the northern hemisphere becomes identical to the length of the day, spring as a time of renewal and rebirth has been celebrated for thousands of years from distant cultures past. And while you have the Israelites celebrating Passover as a, you know, commemorating bringing in a new year, right after the first new moon, right? You have these people spring, uh, celebrating the spring equinox as a rebirth of the new year on the left hand side, all right? And it says the pre Christian ancient world is uh, filled with stories of resurrection around spring. One of the world's oldest civilizations is uh, the Sumer, who lived in southern Mesopotamia modern southern iraq described the story of their goddess ainana onto a clay tablet with some two thousand years before hamashiach didn't 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 abraham live during this uh sumerian empire didn't the lord call abraham up out of the lands so he doesn't worship their gods right isn't this one of their gods right well uh, what does it say anana the goddess anana this is what the ancient sumerians were uh 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 the early Chinese, this is what they, they had to worship in, man. These different gods. And our forefathers, they weren't doing that. Let me get a precept real quick. Let me see if I can get this precept. Um, I sent you some of us to touch up. Okay. See, it's what I meant. This Genesis 12 and 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kin- kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. So the Lord said, get the hell up out of there, man. Get out of there. Because you have our forefathers that was worshiping these different gods back uh, in uh, ancient Sumeria, or the Ur of the Chaldees. Right? There was a uh, man, Ron and Sin, Anana. These are the different gods of the Chaldeans during that time. And the Lord said, get thee out of thy country. I got a precept because what did the Lord tell us to do in America? The Lord told us the same exact thing he told Abraham. The Lord told us the same exact thing he told Abraham. He said, get thee out of that country. The Lord said, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Did the Lord tell Abraham to rise? Then he said, uh, get thee out of that country. I will show thee a new land. This is not a rest because what it is polluted, it will destroy you even with the third destruction. So the same thing the Lord told our forefather, he's telling us. The same thing. Why? Because you have these nations celebrating the same gods, bringing the Lord to Abraham. But you got it. Can I, um, I sent you an article. Huh, I'm about to pull it up. I got an email to myself. Yeah. And I, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Protestant church, you know, they're the ones that kind of uh, 
push forth Easter within the churches, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> you got the Protestant church, you got the Catholic church, you know, two of the most, or, you know, some of the most wicked doctrines, religions, and origins in history. Right, so let me get this quick, please. Let me go to the book of, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, and verse number one. Because again, all of these just go back to idols. When you worship an ancient God subconsciously, you still worship it. When you find an out eggs, you uh, planting eggs in the gardens, and you make your kids go look for it, guess what? That's idolatry. You're giving up your spirit and your soul, like the brothers was going into, to the uh, God of fertility, or uh, the God of so called fertilization. The God is, right? So, this is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and 12. It says, The devising of idols. I'm sorry, verse 11. It says, Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation, because in the creature of God, they are become an abomination and stumbling blocks to the souls of men and snare to the feet of unwise. So the Lord said these things are stumbling blocks to the souls of men. You worshiping uh, them uh, Easter, and it's a stumbling block to your soul. And if you're saying, you know, what is this for the kids? I don't really get into it, but you're not just doing this for the kids. What do you get out of lying to your kids for years and years? I mean, what, what type of parent are you? You just look forward to lying to your kid every year. Oh, yeah, you know, this Easter bunny, you know, it really goes back to Jesus Christ and how he rose on the third day. Well, where is that in the Bible? Where an Easter bunny is correlated with the life of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's why the Lord said again. Let me read that again, verse 11. It says, therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles, and those Germans, that's Esau, the chief enemy the gentiles it says shall there be a visitation so if you're coming so when, when the lord come back and he visits this earth and he makes his great visitation and he sees men joining hand in hand with these different religious christianity and these different things guess what he's gonna visit them verse i'm gonna jump down to verse 12 but a devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them the corruption of life that corruption life you got it it's lucky we need a precept real quick because like you said man earlier it goes into the adventures of man and the lord is not dealing with it we actually go back to the go to wisdom Solomon chapter 13 and verse number 13. all right actually i'm starting at verse 10 or verse 11. And it says, now a carpenter that fell of timber. So this account is going into a man that devises idols in the craft that he does in a time he takes to, to do something vain. Right? And worship it. Right? It says, and now a carpenter that fell of timber after he had sawn, sawn, drawn a tree meet for the purpose and taken off all the bark skillfully round about. So he goes to the tree, right? And have wrought it handsomely and made a vessel thereof fit for the service of man's life. Right, started creating this idol. And after he spending the refuse of his work to dress his meat, have filled himself and taken their very refuse among those which have served to no use, being a crooked piece of wood. Right, these these idols and these things, these gods that you know these nations you know serve for them to make physical images of their god, they have to create them by hand. Right, that's why it says being a crooked piece of wood, because man will go in the woods and start creating idols by hand. And full of knots, have carved it diligently when he have nothing else to do. So hold on. When they come up with these holidays and these idols, the Lord said they had nothing else to do. They was born. It was just random. It was. It came by the will of man. Somebody just thought randomly. You know what? Let me create a god and let me serve it, and then let's actually attach a date to it. Let's make everybody. Uh, freak off and you know and, and serve this guy on this day. You know what I'm gonna do it. And somebody did it. Bored and formed it by the skill of his understand of his understanding, right? 
and fashion it to the image of a man. But I thought the Lord distinguished the days. Right? So, like I said, we're going into it. We're understanding what this holiday really is. And right, it's about rebirth, fertility, resurrection. Uh, um, uh, going into a lot of these, a lot of women parts. Why a lot of these so-called high holy days in the world goes back to a, a woman half the time. Right, the Babylonian goddess you read about in Jeremiah, right? Like I said, uh, Ishtar. This actually goes back to Ishtar, right? Nimrod and Nimrod's mother, right? All these damn high holy days are off, right? Going back to uh, uh, a woman half the time. Right, let me read off of this. Right, did you have anything else, or I'm just gonna read off of this? No, you can read on. Come, the story that go, story the story goes to Inanna descended into the underworld see that? to find her recently deceased husband there she was killed before she was brought back to life by other gods she was permitted to return to the world as the sun for six months before having to ascend into the underworld once again during the winter for six months it is perhaps the first ancient story of resurrection and rebirth centered on screen. So she goes, she hides for six months, and then she comes back out for six months, and she continues to do this. And there was a council, and there was other gods that was helping out. I'm sorry, I get this pretty soon. Real quick. Look at Isaiah chapter 44, verse 8. Because you had other gods that would bring her out. Of I thought the Lord said there was no uh, uh, other gods, only but him. Right. It's Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 8. And it says, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. So while they're claiming in this article, stop it, in this article, she was this uh this lady was brought to, uh back to life by other gods the lord said he don't know any other gods what are you talking about what are the gods you talking about name them the lord don't know them. right the lord said i know not any let me get one more no i'm gonna go back to the article. i just have to get these precepts real quick it's isaiah chapter 45 this verse 7. And it says, I'm sorry, verse 5, I am the Lord and there is none else. And there is no God besides me. I girded thee, thou hast not known me. So the Lord said there is no other God besides me. Right, what are you talking about? Who's Anana? Who's Anana? Right, who, yeah, who's that? Who's Anana? Where she, I mean, where she come from? Because the Lord doesn't know any God besides me. You go to uh, John 17 and 3. You said, the Lord, John chapter uh, 17 and verse number 3. Okay. Right? Last time I checked, the Lord said he's the only true God. So, what, like the brother said, where are these other uh, gods coming from? I mean, we read the book of Genesis, you read about the creation, and you leak it up a second address, the sixth chapter, you going further, you know, to it. When did the Lord create other gods? And when we say gods, we're not talking about the angels or, you know, the Israelite men. You know, when did the Lord create uh, gods like uh, Hades to God the underworld and Poseidon and all these different uh, weird gods that man just makes up from the top of his head? And what, and, I mean, and these gods, if they're gods, how come they have to hide this person? You should, if you're a god, you should be able to show forth your power. God means power. So, you know, it's John chapter 17, and man just believes it. That's the crazy part. He just makes something up, and Israel just want to go with it. We can see why, you know, these heathens go with it. Because these heathens, you know, they, these heathens already have no knowledge. But for man to go, for the Israelite man to be as intelligent and smart and, and uh, you know, and noble as he is, yet we still fall through these philosophies and vain deceits. You know, we're not saying this as if we never fail to them because, you know, we was in the world at one point. Nevertheless, when you learn this knowledge and you go through simple research, you know, the Lord lets you know that all this is vain and just lies. 
So this is John 17 to 3. It says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. And Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, whom thou hast sent. So it says the Most High is the only true God. Right? Not, um, I don't even know how you said a name. Eroster, uh, e Eroster, have you said a name? Right? She's not a true God. And what and the rest of these gods that we're about to go into that ties all in the Easter, none of these gods are real that are workers of man's hands, imaginations, right? That someone thought of and just brought forth. But we can go into the uh, article. Huh, and when, you, um, when you're done on that article, you go to the one I just sent. Come. Into the yeah, come. I got yeah, that's the next one. Come. come. Let me just get this one more real quick. This Psalm chapter 96. And I'm gonna start at verse number 10. Psalm chapter 96 and verse 10. Because like you said, they're hiding their God. They they see they uh devise counsels for you to secretly worship their God. But we declare the uh, uh the most high's name is among the heathen, and, and we're gonna force them to serve our God, right? There's no hiding it, there's no secret counsels how we're gonna get them all right in that day on how to. Keep the Sabbath, right? And, you know, all the Israelites link up and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, where Yahweh started, they had a big council with the 12 apostles trying to figure out how the nation of uh, Edom, you know what I'm saying, the so called white man, is going to keep our high holy day. It's not happening. That's why the Lord says, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. So we're going to say among the heathen that the Lord's going to reign. We're not hiding it, right? So we can go back to I think we end on this one. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's a uh, cowardly too. What type of God you serve that just hiding? That's all. The God just ducking all type of action. I mean that's embarrassing. But yeah, that's the heathens for you. Uh, ain't lying, man. Let me actually let me uh you, you say you want to bring this one out too. Kind yeah. Um. So you know what Easter. We touched on on the origin of Easter the name, oh. right? Touched on the bunny rabbit and where that came from, and now you got the eggs. And again, we going to all of these things have different dates. It's it kind of it kind of remind me of Christmas and the uh, origins of Christmas. They got all these different time periods and different gods, and they just rounded it up all in one you know on one big cesspool of false religion. So you said it says the history behind Ukrainian tradition of decorating of Kaisenki Easter eggs. All right, scroll down. Scroll down. Uh, keep scrolling. There was a certain point I wanted to get to. Uh, you could go back up to that first part, actually. I probably passed it. Or you go back up to that first part. It says you can um, enlarge it a little bit. Come on. It says as the war in Ukraine continues once again. Now this article is made back in 2003, right? It says as the war in Ukraine continues once again into the Easter season with the Catholic and Protestant churches celebrating Easter in 2003, April 9th, and Orthodox uh, Easter. Yeah, Orthodox Easter as celebrated by many Ukrainians falling on April 16th. A spotlight is shining on the Ukrainian Easter tradition of decorating Easter eggs known as Pysenki. Decorating them has become a gesture of peace as the war brought new meaning to an old tradition. Right? To an old tradition. So again, this also goes back to tradition. It says that dates back to pre-christianity so this is even before christ you had men with traditions it says in the first easter season after Putin, you can uh scroll down that's uh, right. yeah to this right here right it says the name of these easter eggs pasanki is the singular uh, Pasenki as plural is derived from Ukraine verb 
Pasati, which means to write, right? It says, so in this case, the word refers to writing on eggs. While many Christians might be familiar with dyeing Easter eggs with solid colors, Ukrainian Easter eggs often feature complex geometric and floral, uh, uh, floral, floral, floral design. It's a lot. Right, I want to jump to the point was they said to go back to Babylonian custom. Oh, you probably got it. I think I think that's it right there. Scroll up a little bit. It's in the middle part of that uh, little paragraph. Right when you see um, uh, one, well, you can start at one of these. Right, it says right there. Right there. It says one of these stories say that the ritual. Hold on, so this thing goes back to a ritual. Right, one of these rituals is meant to present the return of sunshine after a long winter, and eggs are used because of the yellow yolk is thought to resemble the sun, according to a uh, Sophica uh, so, uh, Select, New York City based ethnographer and Pisenic artist. Another pre-Christian legend tells another monster of the personification of evil and the Carpathian uh, mountains. Like it for the pronunciation again. It says, in that story, the more Pisic people make make the tighter and the chains are wrapped around the monster, keeping it to bay so that it doesn't destroy the world. So, I mean, where's Christ in this? Where is who the world calls Jesus Christ have to uh, do? do it? Yeah. it just said it goes back to a ritual. And I believe when you go into it, it goes back to ancient Babylon as well. Right? Go back to the ancient child, uh, Chaldees. You know, but you got it. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and you don't got to make sense, you know, you know, sloppy, of course, you know, for the pronunciation. But these are weird. This is weird words right here, man. Pisenki artists. What do you mean it's Pisenki? What is that? I'm not decorating nothing with Pisenki in it, man. Yeah. Hey, you could actually look that up real quick. Pisenki. Uh, I had looked into it earlier. Pisenki is. Pisenki. Let's see what Pisenki's name is. Pisenki eggs. Yeah. Or designs, yeah, is what it's I believe it go back to some type of uh, Babylonian custom. Decorating eggs because your people out there getting destroyed while you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you definitely. You definitely. <clears throat> He's a what? And I was gonna say, and again, so before you know, even the Easter Bunny came into play. You already had nations dealing with the eggs. So how did so again, how is Easter? You know, that's why I say it kind of remind me of Christmas. Because with Christmas, you got a lot of wickedness in different time periods put in on one day. Same thing with this, you got a lot of different wickedness tied in, in different time periods, but they choose to put it on one day to act like if it's some type of godly deed. And it all and literally every part is a vein. I never heard of Paseki eggs until I went into this. How come in a Christian church when they're going over Easter, how come they don't bring up Paseki eggs? And I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Like the brother says, you know, weird uh, names that you never heard of. Paseki eggs. I mean, I don't know about brothers, but, you know, my family wasn't cooking this for breakfast. You know, Paseki eggs. You know, you getting up early in the morning. You smell the breakfast downstairs, you go downstairs, and you see these eggs laying there. And you just, you know, with, with no question, you just eat it. That's how you know these are other heathen. I'm like to believe, you know, I can't speak, Lord willing, I can speak for everybody, but I'm, you know, I'm not going over a brother's house if you got these eggs for breakfast. Or a brother bring these to, to the feast day. You ask what is it, he says, is this pie saint. Like, yeah. I mean, everybody bringing lamb, yon yon, chicken, you know, no other kid doing anything. They got tacos, fajitas, you know, you're doing your thing. Then a brother out of nowhere bring out these eggs. 
Hey, that brother, you know, he's gonna get immediate counsel. Immediate counsel. Right then and there. At the feast day. You know what I'm saying? At the feast day. <laughs> Send down a feast day and then brother put in the lines. You see that? Because brother wanna bring some Paisanki eggs, man. Yeah, I mean and 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 going back to what? The Carthenium, you know, you you're in the you in the mountains painting eggs. These Ukrainians, you know what I'm saying, they down bad right now. They painting eggs, trying to, you know, like I said they celebrating Easter, all your people getting genocided. They, these people go to great lengths to sell this uh, serve their god, serve their uh uh their false gods, man. Yeah. Right? A vanity. And we tell Jake, all you gotta do is serve the most high and repent. Keep his commandments, and you can get everlasting life. And these right. people have no hope. They're getting destroyed over there, and they still still find time to paint some Pisanki eggs to their false idols, man. All right. Is that is that all you wanted on this article? Oh, yeah, that's it. I had, I had another. I don't know where it said. I had it um, saved. It actually said it went back to the child D's, but you know, I don't know where it's going to. Huh. I want to get into this one too. All right. So the ish I was, I was talking about. Right. And it says this article, you know, so called Catholic.com. And it says he and he says no Easter is not a pagan holiday. But then that's and that's Christianity because he proceeds to cut himself in his whole thing. It's, it's crazy. Actually. He's going to end it off by saying that's why it's not a pagan holiday when you're describing what the holiday is. Right. It says there's popular image. That makes his round on social media every year, claiming that the Christian celebration of Easter finds roots in the more ancient celebration of the Germanic goddess Eostre, also known as Ishtar, right? Going back to the Edomites up there in Germany, so called Germany. Right? It, Ishtar was Easter was originally the celebration of Ishtar, the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex. Right? Go back to the Syrian and Babylonian. And those are the two damn slaveries that uh, Jake was under. Right. Right. Her symbols like the egg and bunny were and still are for Timothy and sex symbols. Or did you actually think the eggs and bunnies had anything to do with the resurrection? After Constantine, uh oh, one of the seven municipal uh, councils, right? A, that, that council that he had decided to Christianize the empire. Right. Easter was changed to represent Jesus, but as its roots, Easter, which is how you pronounce Ishtar, is also about celebrating fertility and sex. And this is what they don't tell you what it's about. They hide this from you. It's about so-called what I mean, uh, 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 you know, the Bible, Christianity, Jesus Christ, but they don't tell you it's about celebrating fertility and sex, right? And this and this is the so and this is the God right here. This is that image that they create out of somebody's van, vain mind. This is the image that they created going back to who Ishtar or as they pronounce it, Easter. This is who you serve, right? When you when you um, paint eggs, what is it called? Zayanki eggs? What is it? Pyanki eggs? Yeah, Pysanki. Pi Pi it's, it's pie some eggs. You paint pie something eggs chasing money. Looking at Eve at church, man, because and then you and then on that day you sacrifice unto this guy, you know, which is evil. A naked Babylonian woman, huh? A naked Babylonian woman. So you sacrifice in your life. Yeah, I, I you know that's 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 and that's the root of all these other nations. You see, the most high he's identified as master and a man. All these other nations, they gods really go back to women. You have Egyptology, they, they praise the woman that could, oh, she's God on earth. Everything comes from her. She's the soil, she's the ground, brother. And you gotta you gotta treat her like she's the goddess. I mean, all that's what all of these nations do. You know, that's why the handmite woman, they be uh they be walking around with no damn shirts on. All right. Breast all out because they praise the woman over there. They do what they want to do. <laughs> right? But the Lord said, Thou shalt have no Exodus 23. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. That's plain. That's the first. Thing. The Lord said, "Don't have any other gods." The Lord came out the gates with, "Don't serve any of the gods." Six hundred thirteen commandments, and this is the first commandment the Lord brought out the gate: "Don't serve any other gods before thee." 
So anything else you got to do. Or if not, you're going to serve another God. And that's the first commandment. And our people, they serve other gods, graven images, idols, idol worship, groves. They, they build up groves. They go off a horn uh, from the Most High. Right? And we utterly break off the, and we break the Most High's commandments. We get another priest. Look at Ezekiel. All right, chapter 8. And our forefathers, our, our ancient men were doing these different things. Our ancient men was doing that. All right? Ezekiel 8 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Talmud. So you got our women, they was weeping for another God, crying for another God. And then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Turn ye yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. There, there, these men are in the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, see that, were about five and twenty men. So you had twenty-five men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun towards the east. So they would worship this. Our forefathers went off the top. Heavy idolatry. Worshipping the sun, the moon, these different uh, uh, women that never got clothes on, right? Bowing down to them, burning incense for them. Our forefathers were doing these different things. And you have Jake still doing it to them. The king's children in idolatry. All right, but you got it. So you go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 17. All right, just to let me back on that point that a lot of these nations their gods go back to idols i believe you know on this on this uh bible lot in the corner it got a it got a uh if i'm not mistaken wait hey, you can go back real quick or scroll up if i'm not mistaken it, yeah see on the uh corner well you know that may be so-called depiction of the uh, so-called white man where they try to portray as christ but hey that, that's not the image so that's uh, Right. Not worshiping it, so you get you know Esau putting idols on a Bible website, trying to portray the men of the Lord as Edomites, so other you know people can worship them. Like how they do Mary, but nevertheless, you go back to verse seventeen, like Jeremiah chapter seven and verse seventeen. It says, "See, is thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem?" It says the children gather wood and the fathers kindle fire and the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. So even back then you had women sacrificing cakes and making food for the queen of heaven. And we go back, you know, we go into the history. I believe uh, this goddess was um, Asherah, right? The goddess Asherah. Now she had many names, but you know, Asherah was one of her names. And you had the daughters of Zion, Eve, sacrificing it to this woman. So that lets you know it's nothing new under the sun. You had Jake sacrificing it to this woman. The children getting in there. It says, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So you celebrating Easter is provoking the most out of anger. Because what they're doing right here is no different from what you're doing when you're celebrating Easter. You make it, you make it food, you getting a big feast going on. That's you provoking your God to anger. That's you sacrificing food, cakes, idols, whatever uh dinner you made for Thanksgiving. Hey, at my job at the workplace, they um they brought food there because it was on um, Easter. They brought sandwiches, chips, uh all type of snacks, asking if I want some. Hey, guess what? That's them sacrificing unto Ishtar, and they don't even know it. So let's go to um, Acts chapter 19. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 19 and verse number 24. And again, serve, not, not just serving women, guys, but serving guys in general. Again, it's nothing new in the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. All right. So this is the book of Acts chapter 19 and verse 24. It says, For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana, 
brought no small gain into the craftsman. So again, another uh, account of Israel going off. You had this man, Demetrius, who brought silver shrines to the goddess Diana. When you when you go into the goddess Diana, you know that's one of the major uh, gods of the ancient world. You got something called the seven ancient wonders, and one of them was the great goddess Diana. So reading on, going to the world, it says, "Whom he called together with workmen of like occupation, and says, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our will." So Demetrius is telling the rest of the men, and you know when we make it, Diana, we bringing these different things unto her. Guess what? We making much will. The people sacrificing unto her, they bringing her gold and silver and all these different, things. and we making money. This is what Demetrius is saying. So again, we are serving these idols. You're giving money to the Christian church. You're giving money to uh, Ishtar. You're sacrificing your time, your life, your money to these gods. It's nothing new under the sun. It says, reading on, uh, verse 26. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul have persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with him so i thought a brother went into uh, wisdom of solomon 13. right we didn't know it says so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught but also that the temple of the great goddess diana should be despised and so paul was putting in work so what demetrius had to tell these men hey look man that man Paul, he been going to and fro throughout the earth, telling people to stop celebrating and stop getting down with Diane, making us lose our bread. All right, that's what he's saying to them. It says, reading on, it says, uh, verse 20, verse 27, still, it says, and her magnificence, like, well, I'm gonna read it from the top, so that not only this, our craft is in danger. To be said and not, but also all the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. It says, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship it. And the whole world literally worships Ishtar. The same way how the whole world worship Diana. And you know, that's why around these holidays of Babylon the Great, you know, that's money making day for uh for, for America. Cause they know you're gonna sacrifice your time, your kids. You're gonna sacrifice uh, everything to these different gods that you worship. You're sounding your life over to a bunny rabbit and uh, and Pisky eggs and a naked goddess. And that's what you call East. That's the origin of it. But you got it. Come, on. come. On. So like I said, as we going into it, hopefully you know you didn't celebrate it yesterday. You know, and if you did, you got to repent for it. You know, go up some prayers in the most high for that. But like I said, majority of these artists of articles are like I said, going to par uh, parallel. They're going to say, you know, mostly the same thing, going back to multiple different, you know, holidays, you know, I mean, multiple different uh, traditions. And then they all, you know, they bounded in one. So you got the eggs that represent this that came from this place. You, know, you got the, uh, the name that came from this place. We got the day because it came from this place. It's all confusion. And then he wrapped it up in one and called it East, right? This uh from the sctimes.com. Happy EO story so far, right? Spring April, the time of the equinox is the time time of celebration, ancient spring fertility, uh, fertility festival honoring the goddess Eostre or Ostera or Easter. Right? This celebration, so another god, all right. This celebration of pagan origin pays tribute. To the renewal of the earth, the rebirth of life after the death of winter. Eostre is the pagan fertility goddess of human and crops. Right? The traditional colors of the festival are green, yellow, purple. The symbols used are hairs and eggs, representing fertility because we all know that bunnies breed like well, rabbits in new life. So this is, like you said, he's going back to fertility, kind of giving you uh, the inside of a different god. Right now, now this one's Eostre. These weird names, right? And it says, legend has it that Eostre mated with the soul, the solar god of the spring equinox, solar, right? And nine months later, at Yule, winter solstice. What's that winter solstice I mentioned earlier? 
that's the that's another god that that babylonian god going back to nimrod right the winter solstice or what you know as christmas gave birth to a man god child right nimrod the subject is already you know so-called holidays like i said are intermediate the sub subject of fertility new life in his relation to eostra can be found throughout many cultures colored eggs have been associated with the spring celebration since at least 580 bce and that goes back to your empire so i've been studying what empire all right going back to the assyrian leading into the babylonian all right in persia in ukraine pisanki eggs right I, you know, brother, we kind of went into the pisanki eggs there they go historically honored the sun god who wasn't our forefathers worshiping the sun as we brought out ezekiel chapter 8. the sun god father of eostra's child until christianity came to ukraine right so that's what this, this is what our people are into you got our people into these easter yostre i you can't forget about inana right inana right austere these different gods, man. The Pisanki eggs, you know. You got a lot of these, like I said, these sources that go into the same thing through the spirit, man. Is and these are different witnesses. It tells you on the Council of Nicaea, three twenty-five A.D., the you know the uh, first Christian Church Council, they uh, 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 put these damn pagan holidays in these different things and uh, uh, associated with the Bible and caused confusion. That's why you have a lot of Jake don't even believe in that. Because just they they uh, confused it, man. All right. A movable feast, often called a movable feast. Right, yeah, where's that in the Bible? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, well, uh, the Lord says, uh, "You go to Proverbs chapter five, because these this ho these holidays, like I said, this holiday goes back to the ocean. two women." And what does it say? Movable feast. We go back to it. Is a movable feast, and it, and it goes back to a so-called woman. What the Lord say about women that uh, that have their ways that are movable? This Proverbs chapter five, and I'm gonna start at verse four. But her end is. I'm starting verse three. My son, attend to my wisdom and bow thy ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. These are straight these goddesses are strange women, fertility goddesses. Those are strange women of the nations. But her end is as bitter uh, as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go up down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Now look at this. Lest thou shall ponder the path of life, her ways are movable. That thou canst not know them. Did the Lord? Uh, uh, did this article say that these are movable feasts? Easter is also called a movable feast. Going back to a so-called woman, Anana and Oya or uh, uh, and the Lord said He's not dealing with women that got movable ways. Man. Thou canst not know them. You know what you got? Uh, you go to um, Revelation. Chapter 2 and verse number 20. Right, Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 20. Like the brother said, you know, you servant of uh, gods that's set up by women, or you serving gods that's uh, namely to serve women and to bow your head to a woman. So this is Revelation chapter 20, I mean, chapter 2 and verse number 20. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants. And this is spiritual. Because the same way how you had this woman set up in the church, you know, where she shouldn't even be set up to be, you know, take or to be uh, running a church. Nevertheless, she was set up and she was seducing these men. The same way how these goddesses, these women goddesses, are set up to seduce men and the rest of the woman. To get them a uh, puffed up crowd, right? We didn't know them. It says to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols, right? And she was getting down with uh men, you know, sacrificing the idols, 
doing your thing while idols. She was pushing that in the church of the Lord. How the hell are you pushing idolatry in the church of the Lord? That's what that, that's that's false. That's wicked. We can jump down to verse 14. So, so again, and these things are new under the sun. Yeah, jump down to verse 14. Right, verse 14. It says, But I have a few things against thee. Talking about paragamos in this context. It says, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Baama, who taught Balak to cast stumbling blocks before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So again, when you're doing these things, you're sacrificing unto idols. You're committing fornication. We read in Wisdom of Solomon 14. Are you, I don't know if I touched on verse 12. Did I, did I touch on 12? Uh, I don't believe so. You said what? I don't believe so. Right. How do you go to that real quick? What's Messiah 14 12? Mm-hmm. Right? The device not idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication. So when you fornicating on a spiritual level, that's you celebrating Easter, going to the Christian church, dabbling into these different ideologies and these religions. This was a Solomon chapter 14 and 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, and neither shall they be. Right? It said this thing came about, uh, it said 550 BC, one article. You had another goddess that came around in, seven, in the 1700s. That shows that it's not from the beginning, it's not from Genesis. We didn't know in verse 14. For by vain for by the vainglory of men they entered into the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. Right, and all these things are coming shortly to an end. All these wicked pagan holidays, Christmas, uh Easter, uh what else you got? Valentine's Day, Halloween, Thanksgiving. The Lord said all these things are soon coming to an end. All right, try pulling that when you have shots in the king, right? So called black man with red eyes and woolly hair, right? With a throne, the king of kings, and Lord of Lords. Try bringing up a, a, a Easter bunny before, right? And see what happens. You got it. Huh. Yeah, try to do that. The Lord, the Lord gonna have your head immediately. That would even, man, look at Isaiah chapter 7, 17 and verse 7. That's why in that day, so we're going to be forcing these nations to serve the most high. They, will, the Lord's name, will be exalted. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I can emphasize that the Lord's name. At, look, it's going to tell you at that day, Isaiah 17 to seven, shall a man look to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the holy one of Israel, and shall now what? And shall now look to the altars, the work of his hand. So they're not going to be looking in that day to them, Anani. Uh, uh, spanky eggs, yeah, right. yo, uh, 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 Yostra. You know what I'm saying? We're not, there's not going to be any of that. There's not going to be the work of men's hands painting eggs everywhere, looking at bunnies running around. Man. Neither shall I respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or in- images, because the Lord is going to break down those things in that day. The Lord is going to have his name exalted. You go to Isaiah chapter 2. All right, so understand this. Understand, you know, you, you, you can't be celebrating these wicked holidays, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't be getting in, you know, getting down with Easter. Leave that in the world. We're not doing it for the kids. We're not doing it for them, man. We're not doing it for your aunt. We're not doing it for your, you know, your grandmother. She, she made your favorite food. Leave it alone. It's Isaiah 2 and verse 10. I said verse 11. The lofty looks of man shall be humble, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So there's not going to be any other mention of any other gods. Only the Lord's name, Yahweh Yahweh will be exalted in that day. And a damn thing you can do about it. Because well, hey, we openly praise the Lord. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. You see that? So we can't be celebrating these wicked uh, 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 
our feast days in the world, man. Celebrate these, uh, these cardinal gods, bro. You know, what you got to do? And I got to uh, close the Let's go to um, the root. Let's turn it Let's take a look. Of the root, chapter 4, and verse number 28. It says, For as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so be in return, seek him ten times more. So the same way our mind was going astray from the Lord in these feast days, right? Because we can't act like as well, like I said earlier, that we didn't take part in these, because we did. Nevertheless, when you know better, you do better. So the same way how our mind was turned away from the most high, was turned away from the most high, right? When you start to come back, you want to seek him 10 times more. Serve him 10 times more than you did uh, Easter, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving. Right, you want to be able to serve the most high and magnify him that much more and you know put his name above these different gods that you served in the past. Let's go to Syrac 43 and 30. Right, Syrac 43 and 30. Right, it says, When he exalt the Lord, exalt him as much as he can. For even yet will he far exceed. And when he exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, for ye can never go far enough. And no man can never go far enough when it comes to serving the only true living God, Yahweh, by Shem Yahushah. I read the book of Exodus, 6 chapter. Read uh, Psalms, 18 chapter, Isaiah, write the 12th chapter, and see how the Most High's name is the only God that's magnified throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, but you know, that's all. So the most high time to Come on, praise the most high. And like I said, Lord, you know, willing, you know, if you didn't know this information, now you know this information, right? You didn't know it, you didn't celebrate it, if you did, you know, repent from that. And now you have a, a better understanding of what this holiday is going into through the spirit. Lord willing, you took notes. But we like to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah and bid it mighty strong. Shalom. Shalom.